then there's been a lot of speculation. What's Joe going to do? Is he going to stay in the race? Is he going to drop out? What's he going to do? Well, here's my answer. I am running and going to win again. Let's do another debate this week so that sleepy Joe Biden can prove to everyone all over the world that he has what it takes to be president. But this time it will be man to man, no moderators, no holes barred. Just name the place anytime, anywhere. The knives are out for Joe Biden after his poor performance in the first 2024 presidential debate against Donald Trump. With the election in November just months away, some Democrats are calling on the president to step aside because of concerns around his mental fitness. At least half a dozen House Democrats have publicly broken ranks. More have done so privately. Even governors of Democratic states are not happy at the idea of an old and tired president with failing faculties running at the ripe old age of 81. Joe Biden, on the other hand, is defiant about staying on in the race. In every public meeting he has spoken since the disastrous debate performance, he has dug his heels in, saying there is no question of him stepping aside. With all my heart and soul, I can do this job because quite frankly, the stakes are too high. The stakes are too high. He even said that only God Almighty can force him out. But here's the thing. Unless President Biden agrees to stand aside, it will get ugly for the Democrats. Let's run you through the various possible scenarios and what legal complications may arise in each one of them. First, can Joe Biden withdraw from the race? Yes. If, and it's a big if, President Biden decides to step down as the Democratic Party's presumptive nominee, it would be relatively straightforward to find another candidate. The party's nominee will officially be chosen at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago from the 19th to the 22nd of August. The Democrats are reportedly planning to nominate Biden and his running mate, Vice President Kamala Harris, ahead of that gathering, virtually making the convention just a matter of formality. At the convention, a candidate must win support from a majority of the delegates who are basically party officials who formally choose the nominee. Delegates are assigned to candidates proportionally based on the results of each state's primary. Any winning candidate must get more than half the delegates. This year, Biden won almost 99% of the nearly 4,000 delegates. According to DNC rules, those delegates are pledged to support the incumbent president. If Joe Biden willingly drops out of the race, it could turn into a free-for-all. Democrats would be left with what is called an open convention where they would suggest potential nominees and then continue voting until one of the candidates receives a majority of the delegates. That could spark off a frantic contest among Democrats who are vying for a shot at the nomination. Biden so far has not given any indication that he would consider stepping aside. But if he decides to do so, that opens up an entirely different can of worms. The first of which would be to find a new candidate who has both acceptability among the Democrats, but also more importantly, the ability to beat Donald Trump in November. If Biden were to get replaced, part of the negotiation for him to step down, and perhaps the reason why he's digging his heels in, is to ensure that he gets the final say in who replaces him. He currently seems to be favoring his running mate, the Vice President Kamala Harris. The problem is Harris is polling worse against Trump than even Biden. The second scenario, can Biden be forced out? Well, if he doesn't want to go, this is where the process gets really tricky. In the modern political era, a major national party has never tried a hostile takeover of the nominee. However, DNC regulations do have some loopholes that could, at least in theory, make it possible for Biden to be pushed out. The rules allow delegates in all good conscience to reflect the sentiments of those who elected them. Now this means they could potentially look to someone else. It could be an incredibly ugly scenario though. There could even be a revolt among the party delegates. But the DNC can alter the party rules at any given point, even during the convention. Back in 1968, when President Lyndon Johnson decided not to run for re-election, the party shifted from an open convention in which delegates could cast ballots for whoever they chose 
to a closed process. It was called a closed uh, convention where a delegate was attached to a candidate based on primary results. That year's nomination was won by Johnson's then Vice President Hubert Humphrey, even though he did not have a majority of the pledged delegates when the convention began. Even if Biden were to suddenly exit the race, conservative groups have vowed to file multiple lawsuits challenging whoever the Democrats decide to replace Biden with. Will Kamala Harris then replace Biden? Vice President Kamala Harris would automatically take Biden's place if he were to step down during his presidential term. But the same rules do not apply if Biden pulls out as a candidate before the election. And there is no mechanism in place that would give the vice president an upper hand at an open convention. Instead, Kamala Harris would have to win the majority of delegates just like any other candidate. It may be that Biden then supports her to replace him if he steps aside. She's already on the Democratic ticket. Harris would have access to all the campaign funds that are currently available to the president. She also has a national profile, but her relatively low popularity amongst the wider American public might be a disadvantage, particularly if she goes up against Trump in November. The other frontrunners are all governors from different Democratic states. Gavin Newsom of California, Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, and J.B. Pritzker, the governor of Illinois. Could the 25th Amendment be invoked? The 25th Amendment of the US Constitution allows the vice president and a majority of the cabinet to declare the president unable to perform the duties of his office. If the 25th Amendment is invoked, then power is transferred to the vice president to serve as the acting president. This has never happened before in the 248-year history of American democracy. But following the disastrous debate performance, senior congressional Republicans have called on Biden's cabinet to consider invoking Amendment 25. After the U.S. Capitol riots back in 2021, the Democrat-controlled House of Representatives had approved a resolution urging the then Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove Donald Trump. But that move went nowhere. So in the end, it boils down to one thing. Will Biden step down on his own? If he does, then Democrats have to find a consensus candidate who can beat Trump in November. And if Biden doesn't, then the Democrats have to swallow their pride and see Biden losing to the same man he beat four years ago.